Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin. In my previous video, I hooked up a 100 amp sub panel. I failed that inspection and I'm gonna show you why. So the first thing we need to talk about is what is this building? It may look like a garage because we have these garage doors on it, but it's actually an agriculture building. So let's take a look around this building. You'll see six by six posts every eight feet and we have them drove four foot in the ground with concrete. We submitted to the county for an agriculture permit on this building because we were never gonna finish this building out as far as for living purposes or anything of that sort. Basically gonna park the tractor and just do things around our land in this building so we can kind of work out of this building for what we're gonna do on our own property. So that gave us the ability to apply for an agriculture permit because we have enough land to do that. But where that comes into the problem is when we start installing electric. We were going, or I was going with what the code was for if you were doing it in a standard house. Like if this had footers and these walls were gonna be finished, what I did would be fine. But I have an agriculture building and what I did was wrong. Being that we're working in an agriculture building, can you point out what I have done wrong? I did make one mistake. Even if I wasn't installing in this agriculture structure, I made a wire. My ground is eight gauge and that's gotta be six. So I have to take this back out. That could be stranded wire or it could be solid. I was also told that I had to have two grounding rods, even on a separate structure. I thought that was only for the main structure where the main feed was coming into the house. I didn't think that was gonna be on a separate structure as well. Not a big deal, 15 bucks, well, 18 bucks, and the wire now that I gotta buy over. So I can't take the eight gauge back, so that's kind of a waste. And I had to buy a six. So that's a little bit expensive, but about 15 feet of it stranded. It's gonna make it easier moving in the conduit. But the main reason is these wires right here. Romex wires are not allowed in an agriculture building. So what I have to do is take these boxes out. So three boxes, the wire that I actually put in here and my copper wire. So not a massive deal, but still something that set us back on starting our solar project. And here's the six, six gauge strand of wire that we're actually gonna use for this. So I gotta rip all the wires out of this. And then I'm gonna install this MC wire here. Not only that, let's dig through our bags here. We have to use, when you go to that um, metal wiring, that solid MC, we have to use metal boxes. And we just can't use any connectors, of course. So we bought us a box of connectors. And anytime you're cutting the MC, if you don't get it with it, you need to make sure that you get these little bushings when you cut the actual cable that you put this back inside the cable so it doesn't snag the wire. So I'm gonna get started. I wanted to follow up with you guys, let you know the mistakes that I made because it's not fair to say that everybody always passes their inspection, especially on these electrical inspections. And if you've ever been working in a different type of structure, like maybe even a commercial or something like that, I wouldn't even pay attention to this video but I think this would be a good one if you have an agriculture building. So if you've built a pole barn and you're gonna have an inspection, make sure that you're using the correct wire. And it, it doesn't have to be the MC, you can put it in conduit, like even this conduit here that I got here, you can put it in that. But I find that that flexible MC wire is just gonna be a lot easier to work with. I was actually gonna run conduit and just run the wires through that conduit, but I just found that it's almost as cheap just to have the MC wire. It's a lot less headache to use. So that's what I chose I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna get it set up here, put you on time lapse. I'm gonna rip this out and see if we can get everything fixed, show you what that looks like, and then wait for the next inspection. And as always, the first thing you wanna do is turn all your breakers off. You wanna make sure that the main feed that's in the other garage over at the house, that that's turned off as well, which I've already done. So I'm ready to start work. We're gonna take these wires out. Basically, the white and the yellow wires, take all those Romex wires out. And then I'm gonna take off the, uh, the ground wire from inside out to the, the grounding rod outside. Then I'm gonna install this second rod outside, probably six feet away from the other rod. And then we should be all set for our next inspection.
I gotta feed it, bend it, feed it, bend it, feed it, bend it a little bit, feed it, bend it a little bit. I guess, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and reinstall this. God, I don't like when it does that. That's why I don't use a drill on shit. But so much faster. Rock. Always a rock. It's rod driving 2.0. I dread it because I don't have a fence post driver. I just have a hammer. A little three pound hammer to drive it all the way in the ground. I hope that this is soft and I hope I don't hit no rocks. The last time about killed me. And I drove on it, drove on it, drove on it. it. Takes a little bit when you don't have, and it's not worth going out and investing all that money if you're only gonna drive two or three of these things. I wish they rented them, to be honest with you. Is a four pound sledge. I said three, it's a four pound. So that makes a big difference. All right, I learned my lesson on driving that other one. I'm gonna put this on here, just so I already have it on, because that one, oh, why'd I grab that? Because once I drove the other one on, I couldn't get the, that on there, so I'm just gonna kinda tighten it down a little bit. And when I get closer, I'll loosen that back up. But at least it's on there and I can slide over it. When I keep smashing, as I get down, it's gonna get harder to drive in the ground. Top spreads out, so I'll put this on now. So the first thing that I want to work on is getting these little staples out. So I took this one out. Now I'm going to grab that one from the back. But I want to show you what I use. I just use a good pair of electrical pliers. And all you got to do, I don't want to hurt the wire. Just get a good bite and use this as leverage and just pull it right out. And in most cases, you could probably even reuse a staple. Now that I've ripped out all the wires, taken out all the boxes, we're gonna start reinstalling. Now let's get started with installing these uh, boxes. And they have to be metal. So if I didn't mention that earlier, these have to be metal on that MC wire. And they have to have the MC connectors as well. But I want 48 inches on my plugs, not my, just my switches. I want my plugs up off the floor. I don't like having to bend over and plug them in all the time. What I've decided to do is put the GFCI on this side in case I wanted to run another plug right there, real easy with a short run. I could put it right there on that post. And now I've decided that I don't want the light switch here to run up like that. It's a waste of this. So what I'm actually gonna do is put it in its permanent spot. This could be in a permanent spot. It might come out a little bit, but this just could be right here, no problem. This definitely would not be a permanent spot for this. So it needs to go in a ceiling and I'll show you where that would go. It would go right in that spot up there. And I think rather than wasting that MC wire, I'm just gonna go ahead and run, the, run it down over there, run down that post and then come in there and connect it right there. 
So we'll have one light switch, I mean one light here, and then we can run a series on down that. So one series for that one light plug. So when I want to come back later, I'm going to leave me enough loop at the bottom if I want to change it and put um, like a four gang switch box in there, then I'll have enough to, to do that by leaving myself some room at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is probably come out like this and then come down and come up from here. So this is one thing I'm actually going to change. I think it will be better. This wire run will come down. That will be removed. It'll come down into this box, up that wall, over, and somewhere right in there, probably. And I'll be quite honest with all of you all. I hate working with this stuff, but it's required in this um, setup, so I'll have to do it. So anyway, let's start measuring out what we need for our next run. Well, I'm running out of daylight. Although it looks like it's really bright outside, we're getting kind of late. And I've been out here, I don't know, for several hours, probably six, six or seven hours. It's crazy um, how much time those little connectors, like on this one, how much time that took me. It was like 45 minutes to an hour just on that one little connector and I, and I didn't stop. So, I am out of time. I'll finish up this video tomorrow. I'm pretty close. Reason I gotta, see I gotta to move this um, scaffolding over here so I can work up top and put in that light fixture. I wanna make sure I'm putting it in the right place cause that's gonna be a permanent fixture. So I gotta get my measurements and where I want all my lights to run down on this row because I'm going to have three rows, one in the middle and two on the sides, each with their own circuit. So I can turn on one side of the building, I can turn on the middle middle side and I can turn on uh, the far side. So that's the ultimate plan down the road, but I don't want to put something temporary where I'm going to have to tear it out. The Romex wire was kind of cheap. This stuff here is harder to work with. I don't want to have to go back and redo it. So I'm just gonna take the rest of the day, clean up, prepare for tomorrow, finish this project, and try to get this video out to you guys so you can see it. Because I wanna make sure that I follow up with you about me failing on this inspection and what I'm doing to correct that problem. This time I will pass. All right, it's day two. I got my scaffolding set up. I'm gonna be running in a second truss. I'm gonna bring a light over to the middle of that so it's in the middle of the building so that way i don't have to move that around and i can run one series straight down the middle of the building at least have seven eight lights down that way i think that's what it's going to come up to uh, my little diagram that i drawed and this is just a very quick little diagram is right here so the center will have a lot of lights, so when we need a lot of light, we'll have that switch for that one. When we're working on one side of the building, we'll have lights on that side, then we'll have lights on that side. But right now, I need to get one light switch in up the middle of that truss. My first mistake of the day was putting this in before I ran it through the cavity up there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So by putting this in right now and trying to run it up through that cavity right there and then run it over, I, won't, I wouldn't be able to get this row through that cavity. I wasn't thinking it's too early, I need more coffee.
I've completed the rewire after having the inspector out and him explaining why we couldn't use the Romex wire in an agriculture building. So I think I got it nice and tight now. Everything should be good. We actually put in more lights and I'll show you those in just a second. But probably if I turn this off, you'll see the difference in lighting that's coming from that side. And it's all in the middle. And I actually want to talk about the, the bulbs a little bit that I bought and how that's going to change how I'm going to wire things uh, in the ceiling as far as the lighting coming down on us. And what we have going on here is a 15 and a 20 circuit. And this is our 20 on a GFCI. So this will come in and feed receptacles down the strain. So anything that happens to fault down there will pop this and it's, it's basically double protected from the breaker and from the GFCI, but the GFCI is a lot more sensitive than the breaker. Then we'll move over uh, to our light switch. For right now, we only need one light switch because we're able to light the entire building with just these six lights that I have now. Um, but as you can see, turn it on and off, we have light. And then we run a cable over. This is all permanent where these lights are gonna be now, which is nice. Don't have to go back and do any temporary this may get moved i don't know when it will but how i plan on doing this is running a cable up and then we'll start going in that direction so let's take a look at what i've got completed i hope you guys enjoy uh follow along i'm pretty sure we'll pass this inspection uh with no problem i followed everything that the gentleman told me to do we tore out the ground wire and put it in a six gauge stranded copper line out to two grounding rods for even though this is a separate structure from the main house that's still what uh, he was saying is required so i fixed everything that he mentioned that we need to fix um, so we should be good to go i'll follow up on the video either i'll put it in the comments below that it, it did pass that the inspection is tomorrow hopefully i get this video out sometime this afternoon or even tomorrow morning and i'll let you know you know, if it's passed, uh, I'm very confident that we will. And I'm glad you stuck around with me, seen my mistakes, seen the things that I'm doing. Um, hopefully we all can learn from that. So these are the lights that we decided to install. We got six total lights straight in the middle of the building. And I think it really lights it up very well. These are some high quality bulbs. I'll put a link in the description below. For today, that's all I got for you guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Be sure to smash that thumbs up button, leave me a comment below, and share this video with your friends and family. And if you're interested in those lights, make sure to click the link below, and I'll catch you in the next one.